You are listening to the Majestic Minds Podcast. Jones, who is part of Make It Springfield, and we go to Hollywood Community College together. So, Devar, introduce yourself, my man. I'm Devar Jones, a college student, business owner, philosopher, um, just doing a lot of things, you know. So, I'm a part of a larger community of artists that. Um, have their community space, community center at the Make It, Make it Center, Springfield, Mass. Um, and I'm just trying to make it, trying to see my way through it, you know, through life and survive the struggle. And, um, you know, it's been fun. I learned a lot of things through life and just trying to make another day. Mm. Exactly. Appreciate that. So what can you tell the audience more about Make It Springfield, why you're part of it, and how did you come to find this sort of thing? Um, so I found it through you know, uh, connections and nonprofit social services field, um, and also through school I met uh, my buddy, my homie Sheldon. He's a good artist in the Springfield Mass area. He does a lot of things. He's the one person that first really got me intertwined with the with the Make It Springfield community. And um, yeah, I had a first event here, my first organized event. The place has um, moved, done a lot of development, self development from Edmonton Street to Bridge Street now. And, um, yeah, it's an open space for any type of artist to do what they want to do, you know. So if you want to um, share some energy with the people here, then come out. Yeah, it's a really great space, and it operates as a community for both artists, poets, and musicians alike. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's you know, um, a space where, you know, besides the music goes on, there's even a space where people, you know, can fix their bikes. There's a space where fashion shows are held. There's a lot of stuff that goes on this place. And I was fortunate enough to be going to the same school as you. And then you mentioned me about the place prior. And me and, you know, the Manchester Minds were fortunate to come here and perform here and put on a show a couple weeks ago. We will look forward to doing that more in the future. Also, disclaimer, I apologize for the noise in the background. It's a very, very busy day and it's been a while since we did a show, but hopefully when this episode is edited, we can remove the noise. If not, then sorry about the noise, but uh, what plans do you, you have for the Make It Space in the future? And how would you see how it operates as a community for the people of Springfield? Um, you know, it's kind of like an incubator where you can, you know, start your ideas and come here and just have that positive energy and the staff here and the people and the community will give you the positive energy back and help you on your way to growth and prosperity. Um, for me, my plans, you know, I'm mean, opening these as an incubator myself and um, further grow um, politics with the local artists and the, in the uh, larger community. Um, okay, okay, that's great, that's great. And 
as a larger community within Springfield, do you think the place being in Jesus Christ, man. So. Sorry about that. So, do you think as being, you know, I'm sorry. There's just so much noise today. So, do you think as being as a large incubate, sorry, um, a space, you know, it could allow a lot of upcoming artists, you know, big and small, to like make a name within Springfield. Yes, I do agree with that. It's, um, you know, it's networking. It's getting your name out there, find somebody, you know, because um, art is very subjective, suggestive. Is it suggestive? Selective? Suggestive, I would say. Yeah, it's, um, you know, just because you don't, you know how art is, if you, if you make a piece of art, and it may not sell immediately, but you know, in the future it might grow off and worth, you know, be worth something then, you know. But it's just finding that right type of crowd. And it's really about finding your own voice. And it's just finding the right type of crowd that is like that can, that your voice can flourish. And so that's a big deal about um, the space. We're about like supporting voices. And um, you know, just growing with people. Mm, that's a good answer. I agree with that because when you know starting small and trying to make a connections and network with people, you want to start somewhere in an area that gathers a lot of people. But that's also within hometown, and that's how a lot of these big artists and how these big businesses start. Like how. Um, what's a good example that everyone knows I'm playing playing with right now? Like someone like, um, what's it? What, what was Google found? Was Google found in someone's like garage or some shit? I don't mm-hmm. remember. But, Google, Facebook, uh, Apple. Yeah. And those things are found in garages. You know, sometimes it takes a little while for a business to grow and for a person to you know, their worth to be acknowledged or their art to be acknowledged. So it's a good place, you know, like, so um, it's like a studio, but you don't have to pay for it, like the rent and the overhead and stuff like that. It's a nonprofit organization. So they're here to like support artists and then find new talent and voice. Exactly, exactly. And then having those essentials and learning how to utilize it and make the best of it, you can really work it somewhere. Especially if you know you have a variety of talents, you have a team, and you have a way to market yourself. Marketing yourself is always the best strategy. If you have the talent, the discipline, and the knowledge, that can bring you very, very far. Me to far. My first-hand experience can tell you this from the bottom of our hearts. It's also very necessary to be able to maintain that over a period of time with inflation going on, with the pandemic. These skills are more important to just have than ever, especially, you know, being locked in for a period of time. I, I, I can't even imagine trying to get somewhere with everything being closed down and just having to resort into everything online that's a difficult period for me and mr majestic minds when we were getting started so in terms of what's going on as of right now with inflation things being more expensive things getting more Tense within communities, people, individuals, collectives. What you see is the most essential or the most important things you learn within having a business and building a community. Um, I mean, I'll say the most important thing, there's a lot of things that are important, but I would say like identity, culture, um, you know, being able to stand up as like a sovereign person that doesn't have to um, 
you know, like you're not forced to have like a contract or forced to speak on things that you don't want to because like you have a contract and you're signed by a company or something. This space gives you the ability to, um, you know, again, like find your own voice and have, um, speak your own conversation and where you come from and your story and things. Instead of, um, you know, having to to follow what the narratives of like other, um, you know, big name companies and things will have to have, um, what is it, like politicized messages and things like that of that nature. It could be just like a, you know, peaceful atmosphere here and things. And, that's another thing about the community that's really big, that's really good. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to feel rushed to like sell tickets or have to feel rushed to like speak on. And um, yeah, man, like half night intensity and uh, I'm sure of where you really put your food in is just more important than ever, especially being, you know, a black individual in the United States, which is a topic I want to do t touch on, the modern identity of a black American in the United States. And also, um, during the time of the of this recording, um, I believe Juneteenth was, was a couple of weeks ago or a month ago? It's still June, right? Oh, yeah, so it was probably a month ago. Yeah, and it was recognized as a national holiday, which is very exciting. And it's really great that a lot of our important history and, you know, many, many huge aspects of our life are being more recognized, more, more by it. Within within acknowledging the things that happened back then, what would you say as of today, what, what are big marks or big impacts by black Americans are being recognized today? You know, it's like whenever people, this is just my personal perspective on it. When people talk about things of black achievements or what black people have done, it's always within a past timeline. Like how we built the pyramids, how the richest man in Africa, Mansa Muta, I, I, I hope I pronounced that right. I probably didn't. You know, people of days in old, I want to talk about days in within today. Like what are we doing today to have the same impact and the same reach as in, you know, like compared to years ago. And when I just look at Black America today, I see, you know, independent businesses. I see this getting like a huge leeway in the music and that's good, that's good. But I feel like there's something more we can do within our communities, like teach more financial literacy, teach, you know, young black kids, students within our communities to basically like get better at saving, you know, get better at, you know, eating healthy. You know, there's a lot of stuff on my mind because being within, you know, a family of 12 myself and being within, you know, in a big household, it's like you start to learn some things and you learn how things used to be for certain people, but being a part of the next generation, you try to improve on it. Like, it's some tough-ass shit, man. It is some tough-ass shit. So, I'm glad to be bringing this topic with you. So, Devar, what are some things you think that black people or black America as a whole that could bring into the world today without having to be resorting from the past. You got anything in your mind? I feel like there's a lot of inventions that black Americans uh, made themselves that have really went underneath the uh, radar. You know, like a lot of black scientists do a lot of things. There's a black man that built like the second car design in America or something like that. It was crazy. There's a lot of inventions that black people need, but 
It's also about like the identity, like I said before. We have took it over like another society's identity and it affects the the cultural aspect of how like people look at themselves and all type of things, you know, like how if like another if like I don't know, it's just it's really difficult to explain how um you know, one culture coming in and coming in and oppressing another and forcing that second culture, the oppressed culture, to take on the oppressive identity and um, social norms and eating habits. You know, it's like, it's, it's different. Because when you're from, like, the, like, you have different eating habits from Europe to Africa, Europe to Asia, Europe to North America and South America. It's, it's all different eating habits, so that really affects um, a person's body, a person's, person's stress and disease levels, and all these things get, uh, get affected by just changing your diet. And also, like, financial literacy and, like, how the mind works of, like, different cultures, too. It all, it all gets affected and changed. So I, I also want to um, say, like, where did, um, I just feel like kind of weird about like, black history that the, how it's practiced in America, because there was a lot of um, black people that was from all over the world, and like Marcus Garvey was in Jamaica, and he had little... Um, history in America, he had a lot of other history in other parts of the world. So I feel like he, you know, like just because he wasn't in America, do we not speak about him as being in the black history? And I think like they should speak about that, but there's also other people who are black in other parts of the world that did a lot of other things and they're not spoken about at all in Black History Month. And I feel like that's a weird, that's a weird situation because there's original Australians that are not in the Black History Month. And you know, like now they're, they're almost extinct now, but they should, you know, like people like that and um, and the Centenine, Centenine, was it Sentinel Islands or? Oh, Sentinel Island. Yeah, they, they have no. They should be considered as black people too. You know, like I feel like those, um, you know, those cultures and other other black cultures to show the diversity of black people. There's so much diversity, and I feel like there's just so much. Um, you know, they just want to put black people in a box and. It's just like, I don't know, I don't feel like that box works and stuff, you know? I don't think so either. It's because, like, you know, like, as our own people, we have a lot to offer, and we contribute to both American history and to love history to a variety of the world, but at the same time, it's like, we're antagonized by either be like, you know, propaganda by the media or experiences from other races and regions of the planet or bad history with, you know, certain groups of people. It's just like, you know, this type of antagonizing, oppressive, very tribal energy that's always us when really we're just you know people at the end of the day man i just really wish the ship would stop i really wish the ship would stop but like at the same time that's really what the powers that be would want it's like you ever you hear stories of people from a long time ago you know having these different religions grandies you know cultures these structures but like how how many of the stories or history have you heard of these people you know coming together and interacting with each other you know like can you imagine just like if just you're just united it's like 
Jesus Christ, man. Oh, yeah, 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 I think it's just a little We'll go on for a few more minutes, but as I was saying, yeah, it's like, you never really hear stories of these people coming together. It's, it's like when you read the story in the Bible, right? When they created the Tower of Babylon, and all the people of the world created this tower to heaven, and then, you know, God struck it down, and then they were separated to different regions of the world, and they started speaking a different language. Like, and it really makes you think, like, is there a reason why we can't come together, or is there something big behind it? But as you said, you know, as black people and even other ethnicities, we are really shut down and we're really put under a rug in terms of our full potential and what we could really do. You know, it's just, just, that's just the way it is. But we can't let that stop us. You know, we got a lot of things coming. You know, we're getting into the spotlight again, and hopefully we can hold on to that life as long as we can. So what would you say the future is looking like for Black America, and what changes or things we could do to, you know, make it better so we won't have to, like, say things from 100 or 60 years ago to make it seem wrong? You know, it's a big question in my mind, so take your time with it if... Um, I feel, I feel as the black community pushes forward, I feel that there has to be a priority on education, that is one priority on education for men and women, but also I feel there is a good um, possibility that Africa may or Africa and black people may be like the next upcoming superpower with um, a lot of its um, resources. And now that it, it's emerging to the you know financial market and getting some more, a little more respect for its political system. And, um, you know, the market, the world being a little more transparent than it was in this cold war and, uh, and in the past, you know. Like, I definitely think Africa and countries like Na Nigeria, Angola, and um, South Africa may become like big uh, money markets in the future. And I also believe that Haiti might make a turnaround. And with, um, you know, these countries, these black republics moving to being like top oil producers and uh, resource, uh, producing resources, I feel like they have a chance to like be the rival of the USA in the next few generations, probably the next generation, probably the next 40 or 50 years. But, um, I also believe that to have, uh, we have to have like educational, but we have to have uh, financial capital and to purchase land. As, um, recently, not, not even too long ago, we didn't have the opportunity to buy land and buy land to buy houses, you know, like 50. 50 years ago, we was in redlining and all these other things, and some of these practices are still happening today. So we just gotta start taking the advantage of the opportunities that are given to us, because um, you know we have a lot of talents and resources in our mind that we just naturally have. So we just gotta take advantage of the opportunities we get. Yeah, I feel that, man. I feel that. That's what I'm thinking. Yo, yo. Hey, pretty good. We're recording the episode right now. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. So, yeah. So. Shit, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Alright. Um, you got everything out of your mind? You got everything out of your mind? How are you? Oh, yeah, basically. 
Alright, we got um, another event coming up soon. Probably not, but another event coming up soon. Uh, another open mic night event. We're going to have a little music, a little art, a little philosophy, all type of things involved. Um, so, yeah, just connect with me. Shout out to Magic Minds, the homie right here. Um, came through and had a great performance. Yeah, that's it, folks. Yeah. All right, this is our guest, Tavar Jones, who is part of the Make It Sprinkled Space at 286 Main Street, Boulevard, Sprinkled Map. Two eighty six Main Street. That's the name of the street, right? No, Bridge Street. Oh, Bridge Street. Sorry, my bad. I got wrong. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, apologies for the noise in the background. So, this is Morgan with my guest Tavar Jones and Jessica and Faith and Faith. And make sure you visit the Make It Springfield space at two eighty six Bridge Street, Springfield, Massachusetts. We have events coming up. You're going to see another live performance from Logistic Minds, another guest, and I will see you next time. Peace.